Hey there, welcome to the channel. It is Mark here from Mark Explores. Today I'm gonna to be taking you guys to Blue Licks Battlefield in Kentucky. Today is August 20th, 2022, but back in August 19th of 1782, there is a Revolutionary War battle that took place here. It was a relatively small battle and a relatively quick battle, and it ended in a defeat for the pioneers. But throughout this video, I'm gonna take you guys through the battlegrounds, through the museum, and also show you some of the tents that they have set up. All right, let's go check out Blue Licks Battlefield. This right here is Tanner Station in Blue Licks Battlefield. David Tanner, early Kentucky pioneer landowner and entrepreneur, owned a salt works on the lower Blue Licks. A fort built over a spring protected the salt workers from Indian attacks. Settlers such as Daniel Boone and Simon Kitten stopped here to make or buy salt as they traveled the Buffalo Trace from Boonesboro to Maysville. So this replica was built in 2011 and it's based off of the Tanner Station that was actually built in 1784. You can somewhat see in there some chairs, a little table, then there's the ladder to go up to the second floor, but it is unfortunately locked. There's a little window up on the second floor, a little see through. Here you can see the back side of the chimney. It's really cool. Here's another little area we can try to see inside. Oh, sorry. Hard to really see what's going on in there. A little dark. All right, so I'm at Blue Licks Battlefield right now. Checking all this spot out. Check out this old chimney. That is so cool. Closer to it. It's amazing. Side of home and grave of Major Geo M. Bettinger. Well, on August 19, 1782, pioneers suffered a bitter defeat and were routed by their Revolutionary War enemies. Captain Caldwell concealed his British and Indian army along the ravines leading from this hilltop to the Licking River. Advancing into the ambush, the pioneers were outnumbered and forced to flee across the river. So up here on this hilltop that I'm on, Captain Caldwell had all those troops, the Indian and the British troops up here, and down where the camera's facing towards that truck area, that's where the Licking River is. So the Pioneer troops came up there. They didn't expect that many people. Uh, they were totally outnumbered, so they had to flee and rush back down towards the river. Good day. You think cut down three trees and get yeah. the branches off and just right. put them right. off? Yeah. I, I understand. Cedar's a good, good tree. Yeah, there's your form. Yeah. Yeah. It's called a transitional. Which, which one? That one? Okay. 
those rifles. The, it, the difference between a rifle and a musket yeah. is the rifle's got grooves in the surface and spiral, and it causes the ball to spin. Mm -hmm. well, that's more accurate, right? And the ball can go like farther. Yeah. Why, right when the rifles were made, those guns were much more deadly, much more lethal, because they were much more accurate, right? Yeah, you could, there's a, a true story. The, the musket that the British used, how brown best, it only had a range of about 60 yards. And they didn't even say aim, they said present. That's why they lined up shoulder to shoulder. The idea was just send a wall of lead down there and somebody will hit something. But then uh, the Germans came up with this spinning the ball with the grooves, the rifling, and it was popular with the frontiersmen because it was so much more accurate. Right. And there's a, this is a documented event. I think the guy's name was Baines. He was a British officer. In the Battle of New Orleans, there were four officers sitting on the hillside on horseback overlooking the battlefield. And he saw the guy in the broad brimmed hat mm -hmm. looking over the rampart, looking right at him. And he brought up his rifle. Well, they were laughing because he was 400 yards away. They were like, you can't hit that. And they saw the puff of smoke and one of them fell off the horse. And the guy didn't even take his eyes off of him. He just reached over and handed off that rifle and brought another one. Oh, my gosh. And he brought it up and shot a second one. That is amazing. Then the smoke came in from the cannon fire yeah. and, it, and they couldn't see him anymore. Oh my gosh. But they didn't laugh when he was making that second no. shot. Oh, those rifled muskets definitely changed, changed combat back in those days. I've been studying the Civil War a lot, mm -hmm. but I haven't thought much about the Revolution anymore. And this, well, was, this battle was so late. Wasn't the war already over or just about? It was a year, almost a year since yeah. Yorktown. It was very they close didn't get to the, the end. They didn't get the email. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't get that yet. A little, a little far away. Kept them, helped them keep them out. And, and they traded, they gave them furs, I mean, firearms and powder and stuff that no whites would ever settle west of the right. mountains. That's and so it was, mostly it was Indians that they were fighting. Sometimes there would be a British officer. This fight was with Indians too, right? Mm -hmm. Caldwell had some Indians. Yeah. I always got along with and uh, the, uh, cause that's not how it went. But, right. Yeah, it was, uh, there were several. Uh, in Shelbyville next month, we'll, the Painted Stone Settlers will reenact the Long Run Massacre. Okay. And that was during the, re during the revolution. Out. It's a southern mountain uh, rifle. It's trimmed in steel instead of brass. So it's a little less expensive.
So these are saws that are painted with all of the covered bridges that are left in Kentucky. The Dover, the Cabin, the Goddard, Beach Fork, Schweitzer, and Old Town. Well, it's not all, and there are a few more. Oh, here they are. Here's the other ones. Bennett's Mill, Clarksville, Johnson Creek East Fork, Valley, Pike, Walcourt, Grange City, McKinneysburg. So all of the covered bridges that are left in Kentucky, there's a saw that's painted with them. It's amazing. It's another series that I'm covering. I'm covering all those bridges. In fact, after this, I'm going to go to one of them now. It was really cool. I was not expecting that here. Oh no, you're totally fine. <laughs> so many cool things to see. Some wooden swords and guns. A couple other little things, little boxes. Oh. It's great. I totally would have wanted that as a kid. Wooden sword. So walking the battlegrounds and people still come and honor it and talk about it and keep its its history alive. I love history. I love battlefields. I love le learning more about American history. There's so many things to learn and so many things that you might think you know that you're totally clueless on. So it's important to come to things like this. It's important to come to to battlefields, especially on their anniversaries, to where you can talk to people who have studied the the battle so much more than you and studied the the time period so much more than you have it's very informative and i just love it i love everything about it so i hope i can do this play some justice and if you've never been to blue looks battlefield in kentucky you should definitely come out really really beautiful place
All right, guys, hopefully you learned a little bit about that battle. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about American history in general. And if you enjoyed this video at all, let me know by tapping the thumbs up button. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn the notification bell on. I plan on going to all the bigger revolutionary and civil war battlefields in Kentucky and taking you guys along with me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching all the way until the end of this video. Really does mean a lot to me. Hope that you have a fantastic day and be sure to always keep exploring.